Today, I'm going to take a look back at some of the improvements a few of you have made to some of my projects and also take a quick peek ahead to discuss a couple of tweaks to the channel moving forward. Hi, and welcome to Resin Chem Tech, and a Happy New Year to everyone out there. One of my favorite things is when my viewers report back to me that they successfully installed one of my projects. And even better is when they take those projects and they either improve upon them or adapt them for unique uses. So to start out today, I want to take a look back at some of my previous projects and some of the improvements and unique adaptations that you guys have shared with me. Then I'll take a few minutes at the end to talk about the plans for the channel in the new year. As always, be sure to check the video description for additional information, including links to the original projects and, where possible, links to the viewers' updates. One of my more popular videos out there was my staircase lighting system that didn't require modification to your stairs. And many of you shared with me your successful installs of these in your own home, including some unique ways to use them, such as down a long hallway or even underneath a bed for floor lighting at night. But there was one user who made a substantial improvement that I even went back and adopted into my own system. YouTube viewer Dorfmeister took my stair build and improved upon it by replacing the original PIR motion sensors with the VL53LOX time of flight sensor, using distance instead of motion to trigger the lights, more or less creating a brake beam across that first step. This eliminated all the ghosting and false triggers I was getting from the PIR sensors when I would just walk by or near the stairs. This particular upgrade was so outstanding, I even made a follow-up video showing how I swapped out the original PIR sensors for the improved time of flight version. Another popular build based on your feedback was my LED parking assistant. And based on some of this feedback, it also appears to be one of my projects with the highest spouse approval factor, with many of you telling me that the wife or your significant other loved it. But at least one user reached out to me because they wanted to install more than one of the parking assistants in their garage. So I had to create an updated version to allow multiple installs on the same network. Another viewer flipped this system around. Nappy Jim shared his install with me. Now his wife backs the car into the garage, so the LED display needed to be on the opposite wall from the actual sensor. His goal was to maintain maximum distance behind the car. Prior attempts with floor tape and the car's backup camera had issues anytime the camera was wet from rain or snow and the tape couldn't be seen. But with the parking assistant, he was able to get consistent results with maximum space behind the car. However, flipping this system around required a 40-foot run from the controller to the LEDs. Too much for even a level shifter. So he ended up installing an F-amp booster in line to boost the signal to the LEDs. One of my personal favorite and probably most used projects is my DIY amp that uses an ESP32 to provide an interface between MQTT and UART, allowing integration into Home Assistant and provides the ability to play music from just about any source, local or streaming. But of course, my design left room for improvement. YouTuber Kaufi took my design and improved upon it by adding a much better display that showed more relevant data, an improved button arrangement, and what I think is a better way of showing the source with individual LEDs as opposed to my single RGB LED. In addition, he added an NFC card reader that allows him to use NFC cards to launch a source or a playlist by just tapping a card to the amp. Oh, and he even designed a custom PCB to hold the ESP32 and other connected components as opposed to my original Electro Cookie version. But I feel one of the most unique uses comes from Kiro Kai, or Kiro Ki, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing that, but she found an old 1962 Phillips radio at a boot sale, which come to find out a boot sale is the Indiana equivalent of a flea market, but everything sold out of trunks of cars. But the transformer and all the electronics were shot inside of this old radio. She took the DIY amp and an ESP32 and rebuilt the internals, connecting the original buttons with limit switches and also adding an FM transistor radio board from an old FM radio, an IR receiver for remote control, and an LED noodle for the original dial backlight. The end result, in my opinion, is a beautiful piece of equipment with all the modern technologies for playing nearly any music source. This is probably one of the favorite builds I've seen based on one of my projects. These improvements, along with others that have been shared with me, have inspired me to order another amp board and make my own version 2.0 of the DIY amp. But I also have to give a shout out to Xbell Serviceman, who inspired the original amp build and sent me the first board for review. He also gets the prize for one of the best non-3D printed enclosures, converting an old food takeout container into an enclosure for the amp. Thanks, Rich. 
While on the subject of the amp, I did an update video where I added an IOI 9341 touch display for selecting my favorite Sirius XM stations with the touch of a button. Now this would not have been possible without the assistance of Dorfmeister, who created an add-on library for ESP Home that made setting up and using this display in ESP Home much easier than the default display method. He also adapted the ILI 9341 for other uses in ESP Home with Home Assistant, such as controlling door locks or a simple display of entity states. And note that he too also made a custom PCB for mounting the ESP32 and attaching to the ILI 9341, which made for, for a very nice small enclosure footprint. I also featured the TM1638 seven segment display in a video, showing how it could be used with ESP Home and custom Arduino code. And once again, you, uh, YouTube viewer Cowfeet took this idea and ran with it, creating a custom PCB, utilizing multiple TM1638 displays, adding colored LED indicators, an LED noodle, and even a buzzer. And all this is integrated into Home Assistant via ESP Home. With my LED curtain project, many of you reported back that you were able to remove the controller from the original Govi curtain lights and replace it with the WLED controller I used in my project. That effectively gives you all the features, advantages, and local control of WLED without all the construction steps of building your own DIY curtain version. Others, such as this display by Martin H, adapted my version to fit within a given space, changing the original dimensions and layout of the matrix. So those are just a few examples of some of the projects and builds that you've shared with me, and there are many others. I actually love to hear back from you when you've successfully built one of my projects, or better yet, improved it. So be sure to leave me a comment down in any of my videos if you've successfully built or improved one of my projects. Now moving forward, my channel just turned three years old and frankly, I'm a bit shocked, amazed, but extremely grateful that I'm now approaching 20,000 subscribers. I've always taken the approach of trying to show what I wish I could have found or saw when I was first starting out, whether that be something to do with LEDs, DIY components, or even home assistant. And I like to always try to explain the why, not just the how or the what in a lot of my projects. That hopefully allows you to take my concepts and adapt them to your own uses for your own projects, just like you saw in some of the examples I just showed. Yes, this does tend to make my videos quite a bit longer than the average YouTube video, but I also always try to leave links along the timeline so that you can jump ahead or come back and rewatch a particular section of my video later. Now, I rarely do product reviews and would only accept a product to review if it fits into an existing project or otherwise is a match for the channel but it's just not something I wanna do on this channel and I don't see that changing anytime soon. Over the past three years, I've tried to release a new video every two weeks and I've pretty much done that with only a couple of exceptions. Part of the issue is some of these larger project builds that a lot of you like to see can take quite a bit of time. There's figuring out how to build it, actually building it, doing all the filming and editing, creating a corresponding written blog article, and a lot of times a GitHub repo and wiki with all of the code. Now this schedule often means as soon as I finish one video, I must immediately start creating a new video to be able to meet that two week release schedule. This has left me with a long backlog of projects I would like to go back and revisit and or improve. I have multiple requests, for example, to do things like add lateral guidance to my parking assistant or add a light level sensor to the stair lights add ESP32 support for some of my projects. And the list goes on and on, plus there are numerous little bugs and fixes that I need to do to some of my code. I would also like to go back and add MQTT Discovery, which I just covered in a recent video, to all of my projects so that you don't have to enter in all that YAML when you want to adopt one of my projects. This doesn't mean I plan on changing what I do. I still want to take a look at new components and how they might be used in our DIY projects, continue to make Home Assistant 101 videos, and also occasionally build a larger project and share that project build as well. It only means that my video release schedule might be a little more sporadic than it has been in the past. Instead of a new video every other Saturday, on occasion there may be an extra week or two between releases. But this is also your chance to help me out. Let me know if you have ideas for videos you'd like to see me make. A lot of my ideas for videos have come from your comments and questions. So if you have an idea of something you'd like to see me talk about or make a video on, be sure to leave that down in the comments. Finally, I'd like to wish everyone the very best for the new year and success in all of your DIY and home assistant projects. May you never see the magic smoke. And as always, I'd like to say thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon.